Hey guys, what's up? Screen Guard Guy here coming to you with another Dota commentary. Today we have Elite and Ultimate Digi, two very strong Indonesian teams. I must say it is good to be back. So now we've got quite a bit of a game from what I've heard. It's very, very, very action-packed, I guess, so I'm going to hope I won't miss too many kills. Anyway, going on to picks and bans. Elite has, Elite has first... Elite. That's I have trouble saying that word. Has uh, first ban. They're going to go with a Lycan Throat. Very, very strong, very... A very very strong late game carry. Essentially, if you can get a BKB, he is incredibly difficult to burst down. Burst down. A, a very very high attack speed. If you can get him, let's say with some sort of life steal, uh, and usually offering, usually he's almost impossible to kill without entire team effort. So we're gonna have Wind Runner also also banned. And a very very strong, very popular pick, especially in the Filipino, Malaysians, generally Southeast Asian scene. Uh, very strong utility, especially with that. Shackle shot, which can, you know, if you can latch it onto two men, it's like about a four second stun on two heroes, which is incredibly strong. I'm also going to see Naga Siren ban. She has been showing a lot, uh, just a, she's she's been showing a lot of popularity very recently. She's a very strong pusher, especially in the uh, especially early on, and she can actually carry quite well if you can get her if you can equip her with decent items. But usually she's played more as a pusher, radiance, manta style, other things, uh, as well as Furion, who's also probably one of the best pushers in the game able to summon those trans because of that global teleport. So it looks like Digi is looking for uh is looking to bring this to the late game. They don't want very many early pushers. Uh whereas he likes very, very standard sort of bands. Batrider also showing a lot of say a surge in popularity, I guess, in the Southeast Asian scene. He can really shut down heroes very, very, very early on. I'd say within five minutes he can start ganking already. Doesn't really need many items. You know, it's good to have a blink dagger on him. So we're just going to speed up a little bit more. I'm really in interested to see the first pick. Usually the first pick will set the tone for the rest of the, how the team's going to, you know, play out their strategy. And of course the counter ban or counter pick is always, always more interesting. Shadow Demon also a very, very, very strong utility hero. Uh, that disruption, that purge, and it's he's a very, very great late game support as well. And uh, not many people... Just that poison stack, a lot of people underestimate the amount of damage output. So he's going to get banned. Also, he's a very good pusher because of that poison stack. Uh, able to knock down creep waves quite fast. Oh, well, not fast, but he can he can definitely push them back. Crystal Maiden, also a very, very safe sort of pick. She's a very great early game support. Uh, able to do a ton of ganks. Uh, she doesn't really need many items. Has a global mana aura. Is that? Yeah, global mana aura. Queen of Pain, very, very strong DPS output. Doesn't she does need uh, quite a few big items in order to stay relevant in the late game, but unlike Crystal Maiden, she has a better chance. Although, if you're playing Crystal Maiden, there is a late game build. Not I've never seen it in the pro scene, but that would be cool if it was. Tiny, is that? Yes, that's a tiny. Also, a very, very strong, a very, very strong ganker. These two are going to provide a ton of magic damage. I expect to see Tiny roaming around getting solo kills, especially against something like Crystal Maiden. If he catches her, just toss Avalanche, gone. Or the life will essentially melt. So we're just going to see... I'll get what gets picked up here. Okay, a Dragon Knight, probably for the, yeah for their late game. A very very tanky hero. Oh, that Fire Breath is also a, quite a good pushing item, but it's quite a good pushing skill. But it is his Poison Dragon form at level six, which it does it does damage to towers. So uh, usually, if you want to push, you'll keep him at level one. And once you hit a level sixteen, uh, so yeah, once you hit level sixteen, you just up it. I mean, you up it to the Frost for that splash damage. I'm gonna have a puck. Also, a very very strong team fight with that with that uh, dream coil and that waiting rift, with a lot of uh, say initiation possibilities, initiation potential, which is very good, very fair, very balanced team fight. Moment, Digi hasn't picked a late game hero. I am expecting to see a late game pick from them. Uh, we're gonna have a Earthshaker, probably the best ganker, especially early on. If you can get, he he really doesn't get that sort of irrelevant in the late game, but his skills tend not to have as much effect, and he tends to go to a different sort of anti-push kind of role, especially with that Fisher. but able to set up team fights, you know, uh, and do not underestimate his ultimate, although usually once you have, if you have a DK, he can pretty much tank it, unless you're going to get go for the Aghanim's build, and that is very rare. You have a Nerubian Weaver ban, also a very strong late game carry, also a very great pusher, especially one, and very, very difficult to burst down a lot of survival skills. And a Chaos Knight, which is very interesting. Uh, probably because of those disables, those stuns. Uh, at the moment, the Elite team, he, they do have uh, that Frostbite, which essentially can go about 3.5 second disable. And of course, Dragon Knights, 
I believe at level one, it's it can be as two point five seconds stun, although it is a melee stun. But it is a they they do more more disables would be good, uh, especially if you're going to be trying to burst down that Queen of Pain. And an AA band, uh, yeah, looking very carefully to knock out supports. But I really think Digi should be picking into their late game here. Maybe they're saving it for their last pick. I'm not so sure. Anyway, Invoker, also a very, very popular hero, but uh, sort of fallen out of favor since his uh, EMP tornado combo got nerfed in 6.74. But still, um, it's interesting to see him banned. They're obviously looking uh, for strategies such as that tornado is really good at disrupting team fights, putting people out of position, uh, which you would want to do in a late game uh, scenario. Let's say if you can use that tornado, remove the late game carry for about four to five seconds, burst down the rest of the team. It could be quite useful. Uh, we're looking at a Rubik, also seeing a lot of play since 6.74 came in the market. He's really found his niche. Uh, it's not really about what the other heroes have in terms of their skills, because no hero really has bad skills, so really you don't have to be stealing an ultimate. You can steal a Toss, you can steal Avalanche, you can steal a Fisher, you can steal a Blink. These things are all incredibly useful. His Fade Bolt is also a very, very strong skill. It's only a 4% uh, decrease uh, per jump, and as, as well as his... Uh, his null, null field, which gives, I believe, about 20% magic resistance, which can make a difference. It makes a, a ton of difference, especially when you're going against so many you know, spell that, spellcasters here, such as the Queen of Pain, such as the Tiny, such as the Earthshaker. I'm just going to speed up a little bit more. You're using a lot of time on this pick, obviously considering it. And it is the Nyx, so that is their late game carry, their late game plan. I'm just going to look at this. Well, he does have the Rage. That's the immediate thing that jumps out, jumps to mind. Wow, it's amazing they picked a spellcaster. Probably looking for that. Okay, I really want to talk about this for a second. Anyway, uh, the immediate thing is that rage, which I I essentially, if you can time it right, you can avoid DK stun. You can avoid maybe Crystal Maiden or slow. Or she it won't do anything. You can he just that rage makes him a carry that can burst down heroes really quickly. Really, only the DK can stand up for any prolonged period of time. And you've always got that. Uh, if you're gonna get a blink dagger on that tiny, he can jump in. Have a lot. You know, just do a lot of follow-up damage, a lot of initiation. Now, I'm just thinking about this lion. He was picked after the Nyx. Wondering what that could be about. A very, very underused skill, a uh, very sort of underappreciated skill is that mana drain, but I don't think it was picked for that. Maybe try to burst down that Nyx? Not so sure. Anyway, the thing about Nyx is he does need quite a bit of farm. His problem is not really damage, although he does suffer from that in the late game. It's really chasing. So usually you want to get something like a basher, anything to increase attack speed. Uh, we have seen blink. I not such a big fan because I have a feeling you might get hit. But still, uh, who knows? Abyssal Blade also a very very strong item. But Abyssal Blade is the most expensive item in the game, more expensive than a divine rapier. So if you are going to buy that, you know, have a think. And of course, a witch doctor to follow it up. A lot of spell damage coming in from the skirt side. We're gonna see. I just I'm very curious to see how he's gonna play this uh, for first items. If he's gonna go in the jungle, there's a jungling build, but some people try and rush Midas. Uh, we're gonna be seeing Tiny going to Tiny going to the map. Oh, Queen of Pain would have been. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, uh, Earthshaker's gonna be playing support. Gonna be roaming. Just three GG branches. Anything else? Okay, we're gonna look at the items in the under team. Puck. Okay, just gonna go for some tangos. Three GG branches. Three GG branches. Very 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 common. Uh, Particularly just to upgrade for that magic wand. We're going to be seeing Quelling Blade. So we're going to be looking Quelling Blade plus Stout Shield. Looking at a very, very standard build for that DK. A little bit of extra hit, last hit potential. Nyx is going to be going to the top. He's going to get a Quelling Blade as well. Probably going to go for... Hmm. Armored Branches. I would be saying some sort of late game item. Maybe Midas. Anyway, we're going to be looking... Uh, just talking about that Switch Doctor. Very strong early game support. I would have expected a babysit. This tri-lane here uh, has a lot of potential, a lot of bursting down, a lot of power to burst down, but of course they are very weak. Tri-lane vs. tri-lane. That DK, I'm going to favor the Sentinel on this one for this particular uh, bottom tri-lane. And of course you have a Puck against a, a Nyx. That's really no contest, especially since one's ranged and one's not. And Lion hasn't been seeing a lot of play lately. Uh, usually gets passed over for Shadow Shaman, who does effectively the same thing, you know, two disables. Uh, he's more of the hero killing though, especially with a burst down, and do not underestimate Finger of Death. It's a great uh, early game item, but of course if Tiny can get a bottle, and, which he, and he is going for a quick bottle, uh, he should be able to turn the tides around quite suffi uh, sufficiently. Uh, Lion won't be able to get the bottle as fast, even though he does have better lasting potential with that range. Uh, and, and just Tiny can always push back, and looks like we're going to have a roaming 
Yep, they're gonna go support. They realize uh, Nyx, you need the farm, so they just went down, scouted it out, uh, put down a few room, uh, put down a few wards. I'm going to leave Queen of Pain at the bottom farm. She should be fine. She has a lot of AOE spells. Uh, she won't get that great farm because that Rubik is, of course, very very strong. Able to hit her with a, able to hit her with that Fade Bolt at any time, but still, she should get a decent amount of farm. Uh, and they'll probably be migrating later. There'll definitely be a gank going on. I'm gonna have a few. I'm gonna have a bit of a pull. And expect to see this Earthshaker. Uh, he's got that smoke, so expect to see him run a little bit. We're trying not to catch. We're trying not to miss any kills. But at the same time, I want to give a sort of a holistic idea of what's going on. Rubik's going to be sacrificing some farm for who? The DK. Yep. They give him. Uh, he. Yeah. He will be their late game sort of play. And it looks like feast. Uh, uh, feast will be the first skill picked. Oh, sorry. No. No. Um, Rage, is it Feast? Probably Feast. It will be the it was the first skill picked up. Uh, very, very strong against DK, I'd say, because he is a strength hero. Uh, the opposite number is a strength hero. It means that you will be doing dealing more damage early on. Just gonna look at that. A bit of harass. Uh, Witch Doctor gonna usher that puck away. A puck is a very, very very difficult hero to lane against, especially once they uh things was said before change where his phase shift no longer requires Sorry, no longer requires, um, what's it called? Mana cost, yes, oh my god. forgot the word mana cost. The word is mana cost. Let's see what items he's going to go for. And no item progression yet on that Nyx. Let me see. Has he got that bottle? Yes, he has that bottle. Quick bottle is already up. Regeneration rune. Ooh, I'd say the mid lane is looking for, is looking at quite a, what was going on here? We have a bit of a go. Uh, Crystal Maiden is going to come. Whoa, an immediate hex. I uh, he should get out just fine. Yeah, he still has that regen rune. He'll pop it, and he'll be right as rain. In the meantime, we have got a bit of a push coming in here. Puck going to be very, very difficult to learn against, very difficult to burst down, but you do, if you can get a, a sufficient open wounds, maybe a cask, and of course a very well-placed Fisher wouldn't be a problem either. This Crystal Maiden doing a fantastic job, using the illusions to tank the tower, at the same time doing a bit of harass, and then going after, allowing the Lion to get those last hits, allowing him to push the tower. And he's also got his bottle up as well. And Crystal Maiden's going to be scouting at the runes. Very, very strong support. Uh, mid lane, it's looking like it's not going to go. And we're going to have a bit of a go, mate. Open wounds went off. Maledict is on. No, that chase, that chase, yeah, he should be fine. That puck is going to, no, not, not, not enough damage done. Uh, they made a go. I think they're wasting a bit of time, which is very, very dangerous, especially since this Dragon Knight looks like he's farming like a bee. 17 to 4 already uh, in 3 minutes. That is very good. That is more than 6 a minute. Keep in mind there's only uh, 8 creeps away, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry, what am I thinking? 4 creeps away, but 8 creeps a minute. What am I thinking? 4-1 uh, for this for this puck, and we're going to be looking at... It's really the carries you have to look out for. 13 to 6. And we're going to look at the bottom again. I thought, sorry, I thought something went off. Screen of Pain is finally picked up. Uh, Dragon Blood. So it looks like he was going for the strong blink and shadow strike combo. What is going on here? We're going to be looking at a smoke coming in for that lion. Uh, a bit risky, especially since he's uh, huddling so close to the tower. Uh, really better not, I think. Uh, shouldn't be much going on. If he comes out, moves out of position, but he's a very skilled player. He probably notices uh, they're not, they're missing from from view. Although, the, and this puck is also staying very, very close to the tower. Very wary of ganks. If he can get just a few, couple, just a couple of early ganks, a couple of good ganks, it could make a telling difference. Telekinesis is a very strong disabled spell. And what's going on here? They're going to make a move? Nope. Absolutely not. Uh, just a little bit of baiting. And already a very early push gonna go on here. Crystal Maiden doing a very good job. If they can get that early tower, that early tower advantage gold is so telling. It, especially if you, uh, once you can get the, it, Dota, is a very, Dota is a very momentum based game. You can get a slight advantage and you can take adva and you can capitalize on it. Suddenly your you can turn your advantage into an even bigger one. So you get a oh. We've got a bite going off. Blink into the woods, very strong, but that tower will definitely go down. Is there going to be a deny? No, there will not be a deny. Sentinel did take it. Oh, we're looking at Tiny came in. A toss to kill that Crystal Maiden. Ooh, and that Rubik is in a lot of trouble. Avalanche, and he does go down. Next, it's going to be... Oh, no. Hasted Tiny says, I don't have the health. Uh, toss his uncle down. Not going to work it. So, two deaths in exchange for a tower. Um, it's about 1,000 gold for that... Uh, for that tower, I guess, two two kills? Well, you didn't really get the Dragon Knight, which would have been the ideal. Really, two supports, wasted. 
a fair trade. Uh, really difficult to say who who came out on that. But but the thing is, uh, Quinn Payne did manage to get her, did manage to get uh, some better item progression. She was not having the best farm. Tiny, of course, got two kills, and he is a very strong mid game ganker. And with the amount of DP, with the amount of disables uh, on on the scourge side, of a, a strong tiny, it could, it could be telling. We will be looking. Sorry, at what items? He's got power treads, which is a very common item uh, for a Nyx. Just to increase that attack speed. Also, a bit of stats. You can play around with them. You need mana. You can switch to mana. Very, very standard item. I just want to see what that tiny has so far. Oh, he's going to go energy booster. That means mana boots, which is... Oh, well, yeah, fair enough. Uh, tiny does seem to have suffered from mana problems. Oh, those two spellcasters. Finger of death just absolutely melts. He goes down straight away. We're going to see a toss. And an avalanche is already being used. A tower is going to do a telling amount of damage. Oh, Frostbite just to stop him, but another Avalanche will do it. Nope. Ah, uh, stun. And yes, Crystal Maiden should be getting away. No boots yet on that Tiny. Anyway, we're going to be looking at top again. Nope, nothing, just a bit of farming. Queen of Pain, going to be able to do a ton of harass. That Dragon Knight, you have not got your support, and you're not going to have the farm you were quite used to. I really want to do a quick farm check, but I, uh, looking at the way things are in the game, the ma uh, looking at the way the map is, I have a feeling some ganks are going to go off very, very soon. And look, oh, Queen of Pain. It'll do a ton of harass. We see a telekinesis go off. Very bad, very bad timing from that tiny, and he will definitely go down to the right clicks, trying to do a bit of damage before he does go. Going in too deep against those towers, and we see a little bit more cautious play. Uh, Dragon Knight can be doing a few pulls. He does have his power treads already up, also a very strong item for him, increasing his attack speed as well. Assault Curas, also the roughly the Lakeum item. Magus just has those boots. We're going to see what this puck does. Only three branches. I really want to check his farm. Has not been having the best time. Only 17 in 7 minutes, which is uh, only slightly more than 2 a minute. Not very good at all, especially for a professional standard. But still, he's probably going to be making up. Doesn't need that much farm, although it to have a blink on him would be great. Level is this tiny. He's really got one level of growth. And those mana boots not yet completed? I'm going to just really want to check his farm. It's 2-2, two, two, so... Yeah, 12 of. Ooh. 12 or 15, not looking so good. But he does have a few kills under his belt, which did go to that mana, which did go, did go to that, um, what was it, mana orb? Oh, energy orb? Energy booster, yes. Which did go <laughs> that energy booster. I English is in my first language, so I really have no no reason to complain. Anyway, we have an immediate stun. I believe that is a, yep, 3 point, it's not, it's not, 3.24 seconds at the maximum range. Uh, a scream almost kills that DK. Uh, he's going to be buying, picking up some TP score. Oh no, a Ring of Health. He will be going Vanguard. Just a bit of survivability. Very good choice. He has been taking a lot of damage, a lot of harass. As I, say, Dota, and I, as I said before, Dota is a very momentum based game. Because he has that, um, because he got that kill, he'll be able to get that Vanguard that much faster. It'll be harder to kill for that much longer. He may even get a few kills, increasing his advantage. Very hard to come back once you give an advantage. Anyway, the score is 3-2 in favor of the Sentinel. We're looking at phase boots already up on that lion. He'll be using Though he'll be spamming that uh, stun like a boss, 24 to 1, so he is picking up the picks. It's now 3 a minute, which, yeah, fair enough, I want to see. 47, and he is going to be going for quarter staff. what is that? Lothar's Edge? Is it? Uh, okay, well, only time will tell. Uh, Lothar's Edge, just trying to think of what else it could be. Uh, <laughs> that, that, I guess silence, maybe, but... Uh, Lothar's Edge, more likely. Who knows? Uh, we've got a bottle up on that puck. You're gonna need some boots if you want to be staying into the whole idea of a ganking team, uh, especially when you've got that lion. And we've got a hasted lion. He's gonna be coming in. They're definitely gonna be making a go. Hex goes off. They're gonna need to time this. Yep, a stun perfectly timed. Finger of death brings down that. Uh, brings down that. Um, God, Dream Coil on, brings on that nice Dream Coil on one. Maledict does go off. He's going to get out just fine. But the important thing is they did manage to take down that Nyx and preventing him, preventing his farm. Really, he is the he's the late game carry, so he will. He that's the farm, that's what they need. Uh, Toss is going to be taken. Not sure how much that's going to impact the game. Uh, it is a very strong AOE. Spell. Uh, it does do a bit of AOE damage on the Toss. A really good chasing item. I, as uh, sorry, really good chasing skill as well. Uh, only boots. Not so sure if it's the best skill to take. Would have preferred Avalanche. But that Tiny, if that Tiny can get a few kills, slow the, the, team, the rest of the team down, bring down that DK maybe just a little bit, and he's having a great time. Look at his farm. Only 39 to 5, but he has been having 
free farm for the past couple of, past at least 30 seconds. And we're going to be looking at a Fisher go off, Echo Slam, and a toss, doing an insane amount of damage. Fade Ball, Telekinesis. Is he going to go down the right clicks? No. Nope. Oh, that's one. And he does go down, almost got away with it. Oh, a solo kill. That is a, a big turnaround, especially once you consider there were really no items on that Rubik, and he just kind of ran into that uh, Earthshaker by accident. And yeah, Earthshaker did initiate. He should have just gone out of there once he did his combo. Queen of Pain. It's just straddling behind enemy lines. Oh, a, a tiny avalanche goes off screen. And there we go, bringing down that lion. Maledict already went off, so he was pretty much dead after that uh, avalanche. And double damage rune, just to use it. Nike's going to go back to his farm. 56 to 22. That's just what he does need to do. He does need to get some, some good items. Uh, 11 minutes. Not too late to get a Hand of Midas, but it wouldn't really be my choice. Uh, I'd go for something maybe a bit faster. Mjolnir, uh, so you're looking at Maelstrom, just to help with the farm. I, I really hate Armlet, but I guess it's the standard build, so I'm going to say Armlet. Assault Kuras, also a very, very good item, but not so sure if you want to get it this early. I prefer it to, I would, to be honest, I would prefer Assault Kuras to, uh, to a Blink, a Hyperstone essentially to a Blink, C just because I believe that Open Wounds is already in the early game sufficient, say, for your chasing purposes, especially once you have so many disables. Uh, really not so sure. If it does go Lothar's Edge, I'm, I'm going to explain, just going to talk about that and why that's a good item, why that's sort of a not good item. Uh, we're going to be going for an Energy Booster on that... Um, Earth Shaker. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, a very, very strong item, but just because he doesn't have the mana to, to cast his skill, to cast his spells if he's going to get a blink. Uh, mana boost is just a very great item overall. Uh, it boosts the mana supply of your Witch Doctor, of your. That's right, you can restore the. replenish the mana of the Witch Doctor, of the Queen of Fame, which is something you do need. We're going to be having a point booster, so probably either an Agonin Stick, which is very, very common. I believe a Hex might have been better, just so you can bring down the DK a bit easier. But still. Uh, to increase the damage, it is a it is a significant increase in damage. That toss, you notice the Rubik just put the toss there. Uh, the toss does do uh, damage to towers, just so you know, in case you guys didn't. Which, you guys obviously do, right? Because you're all professional. Anyway, we have a Blink Dagger up, and that Vanguard, he's going to be very tough to down. He's starting to invade into that Nyx's lane. Nyx is going to run all the way back there, not so sure why. And we're going to have a Puck. He's scouting out with a Queen of, uh, with a Crystal Maiden. If I were them, I'd, I'd just go for the push. 13 minutes in. If you get another tower, that is a telling advantage. It pretty much means the game's won. Whereas Snikes realizes, I need to go farm. I'm useless unless I farm. Which is a very, very prevalent late game carry mentality. Uh, not going to say it's correct, but it is prevalent. And we're going to be looking at a tower push. You notice the poison on that on that tower. Anyway, we're going to be having open wounds as well as a rage nikes, a oh, going to be an avalanche dream coil. Ooh, and that dragon knight does go down. I'm looking at a huge fisher managing to capture two. Ooh, Rubik queen of pain plus that jump. Oh, is he going to get? Yes, he managed to take the earth shaker down right before he goes. Oh my goodness, that was a four for one. Very good initiation power from the scourge. All able to blink in, able to cast their spells. A lot of AOE damage went off. That is the power of initiation. Running, just blink in, scream, run in, Fisher, and of course, bring down that DK before he can do any damage with those open wounds and that rage. Rage allows him to run in essentially, and now they're going to be able to transition to a tower push, bring back uh, that tower bounce. So, yep, and we see the stun, uh, sorry, we see the toss doing a little bit of extra tower damage. Crystal Maiden going to try and go out. She can actually die at this point straight up to this Nike, so. Yeah, she's going to hug the tower a little bit. Yeah, she <laughs> realizes she's not really going to do much. I mean, she can go up and uh, do a bit of harass, but if he gets an open wounds and a correctly timed rage, she will die. Anyway, it's not quite game over yet. This DK hasn't been having as good a farm. 63, not bad. 71, oh, it's no, you know, it's no Chinese farming Dota, but it's pretty good, pretty strong, solid. Uh, we're going to be looking much more than I would have gotten. I'm a terrible farmer. I'd, be, I'd have more... Oh, you see a fisher? Waiting Rift went out. Very low health. Uh, Earthshaker, he does have his mana boots, but if he keeps dying like this, feeding your team, not so good. 6-8 to eight in favor of the, of the Scourge after that turnaround. That said, Gold... Oh, what the heck? He is going for Silence. Wow. Okay, Silence, I understand. It's a lot, a lot better than the, 
than uh, Lothar's Edge. Anyway, we're going to be looking at, see, a lot of spellcasters, especially if you can disable this puck, who has such great team fight potential. Uh, I didn't really see it last time because Dreamcoil only went off on one, but if you can disable that puck before and before it comes in, it's very strong. Also, if you're looking at the DK, who's already very tanky, this is going to be denied. We got Cask. Ooh, a Fisher Fade Ball. Look at the amount of damage. Yes, he does go down. That Witch Doctor, very, very out of position. Knights looking at very low health. He just absolutely get obliterated. That is a huge mistake on the Scourge's part. It is now 8-8. Eight, eight. I was just talking about the uh, Orc of Malevolence. It was just silent. Okay, we're going to look at a Blink Toss. Yep, and he just absolutely goes down. That... That, that lion is actually in a significant amount of trouble, so they get a bit of revenge. And you, you're seeing the power of, a, of an early blink on that tiny. Uh, if you just ultimates right now, Queen of Pain ultimates right now, she'll go down. No. Blink. You can't run. She has a blink. What's she going to do? Yeah, okay, end the screen. Just uh, going. We're going to see... Uh, so there's the power of the tiny. If he, can, if he has his mana, which uh, is something that has always been an issue for tiny, you only use level one grow. Uh, he can do a significant amount of damage in the early game, just especially to support. Just bring them down with essentially that combo, that the toss avalanche combo, which, yeah, just significant amount of damage. That's what I'm saying. What he doesn't need is he doesn't need is that yes, that blink, which gives him that initiation power to get close enough to do that toss avalanche combo. But what was I saying about the orchid? Yes, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Dragon Knight is a very tanky hero. If you can get that orchid put on him, you're looking at, well, what was, was it? You're looking at being able to burst him down faster, and he is really there at the heart of the team. Nobody else can really follow up or tank the damage as much, so it's a really great team item, plus it gives you a, a significant amount of attack speed. So anything that increases attack speed, very strong on Nikes. He doesn't, he, I can, if he can get a heart though, that would be very, very nice. Heart. Assault Kiraz, Mjolnir, who knows. Uh, it won't really help his farm much, though, so that's my only issue with it. Oh, this is so bad for that Witch Doctor. Anyway, yes, he is going to be going down. He's going to cast Maledict before he goes, but no real damage. I think there's, there's going to be zero. Yeah, nothing. Uh, no follow-up. Anyway, we're going to be seeing a bit of roaming. These two are going to be jungling together. Aghanim is already up! Wow! That is very, very, very significant. It is only 18 minutes and you have an Aghanims on your team. I, okay, let me, let me explain. Okay, hang on. I just missed the kill. Apologies for that. I'm going to check it out real quick before I exp start explaining. We're going to be seeing a chase go off. And a stun. No, we should be getting just away. And Queen of Pain is going to come in. They can actually do it. We're going to jump in. going to be scream. Blink. Toss, Avalanche, Rubik goes down, very out of position. Puck, is he next? No, he's going to blink out just fine as well. Puck also having that blink, very good for initiation. I'll talk about Aghanims in a minute once I'm sure everything is okay. Yes, okay. The Aghanim upgrade for your ulti. Uh, okay, we're going to be looking... No, okay, it does. It gives you a decent amount of stats. Uh, it's sort of an, an ultimate or plus a point booster, essentially, in terms of stats. But the thing is, once you can get that upgrade, the upgrade is meant really for late, later game, I'd say 26 minutes, 20, maybe about 30 minutes in, that's when it's, it's, uh, it will get you on par with everybody else. It will let your ultimate be on par with everybody else. Roughly, that's a vague, a vague guide. Uh, Lion's ultimate never really gets, you know, like really, really, really good. Uh, and sort of like it's always been okay. Uh, I'd say even with Aghanims, it's not really worth it to go in on the Lion, but... That's my personal opinion. But for a Queen of Pain, just have that extra, I believe it's like 200 extra damage in terms of a huge AoE, and the range is insane. It is very much worth it. Pushing down creep waves, it, is, it can make such a difference in the fight team. I know she comes in, blinks, screams, uh, wave, and then just saw, shadow strike, maybe the DK. My god, then she can die. Really, she can die. And she will have done so much for the team fight. She, she will be MVP. Really, is that level 2 growth? Uh, yep, level 2 growth on that time. He is going to be able to... He's going to get so many kills. Uh, yes, the growth does... It, yeah, it, it just increases his, his base damage insanely. And uh, he, he'll do extra damage with his, with his skills as well. So, yeah, he's just it's going to be insane. I, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, this is going to definitely be a push. It can't be stopped. But at the same time, the Scourge are going to go... Okay, yeah, we'll just go down here. Uh, nowhere near to completing that Oblivion... Uh, uh, 
that uh, silence yet. Three Oblivion Staffs. Wow, they're not focusing on that tower at all. Nobody's going to come to defend yet. That tower already goes down. Wow, it's quite amazing. Uh, I would have expected someone at least try and deny. Nope, they're going to keep pushing, is it? Yes. Uh, looks like, well, this team sort of disperses off. Going to be doing a bit of uh, jungling. Going to transition to the middle. Whereas the Scourge is saying, nah, let's keep going. We've got the momentum with us. They're all the way up here. What the hell do we have to fear? Come on. That's the initiation power. I mean, DK is very strong. He can take a lot of damage, but you do need initiation. And unless you want to buy a blink on your DK, it's not going to work. Uh, they, they don't want to give up. Uh, they don't really want to switch towers. Uh, so they're going to put up a Earthshaker who, with that Fisher is going to be able to stop it. Nope, not really. And we're going to have a blink in, blink toss. Puck doesn't go down. Wow, surprisingly, very, very tanky. And telekinesis. And it looks like, wow, Tiny does go down. Very out of position. Very, very poorly thought out. Queen of Pain also have forced to flee, and that was a three, a two for nine. Nope. DK, the silence is up. Oh, he does go down. Nice, able to do a ton of damage. Cast is going to go up. That should slow her down just enough. She's going to be trying doing a bit of juking in the woods. What's nice going to do? We can give open wounds on her. She is as good as dead. She's going to be going up. And memorize this route, guys, uh, if you guys don't already know it. Death Ward. <laughs> Death Ward. Uh, memorize that route if you don't already know it. Silence was up. Wow, working malevolence. Uh, it is a wow. It was a telling item. Uh, able to do a significant uh, lowering in terms of the of the it, it increases damage up to by forty percent. If I'm not mistaken, uh, thirty percent increase, second hundred percent, and science amplifies damage by twenty five percent. Uh, must have been nerfed. Sorry, apologies. Ooh, the tower is going down. And so basically, it was a, they managed to turn it around. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He's now 14 to 12 in favor of the scent of the Scourge. Uh, so it's a very close game. It's still anybody's game. Uh, but we're starting to see that the Tiny wasn't able to burst down any heroes quite as efficiently as he was doing before. Or if Shadows is up. Oh, so a lot of farm on that lion. Sorry. Uh, you don't really see uh, such a fat... I don't think you can say he's really that fat. But you don't usually see such a fat uh, lion. Usually more of a support... We're going to have dual braces, just for survivability. Not really that impactful to Rubik at this point. He hasn't really been stealing any key skills, but then again, what skills could he be stealing? I haven't seen the, this Earthshaker do his ultimate. Fisher, I guess. Uh, Avalanche would be great to steal. Yeah, especially just because it's an AoE stun. And that, would, that could be so telling. AoE stun plus Puck. Come on. Come on. What a great combo. You follow up with, say, a line. Come on. The team five tens is enormous, but there's no follow up. There's no huge AOE damage. Uh, Fade ball is a great pushing spell, but it is not an AOE spell. Uh, really, that lions st uh, lions uh, stunt is it like it's like a borrow strike thing. It's not. It's not really a great AOE damage sort of thing. Whereas you've got Queen of Pain here. You've got uh, Tiny is Avalanche. You can really follow up the AOE damage. Just that Queen of Pain alone. She she follows up the AOE damage, and they're waiting for us, for this team to. Just for the Sentinel to just come out a little bit more, then they'll jump on them, uh, come into blink range even. But no, they recognize, I'm just going to stay here. I'm just going to stay here. Stupid illusion, try to bait me out. I can tell it's an illusion. Uh, maybe a bit too obvious, who knows. Anyway, Queen of Pain is going to be running in. Oh, nope, okay, smoke is already off. Are they going to blink in? He should be in blink range. And that tower is definitely not long for life. Wait, what do we, yep, we just got a toss stolen. Not really the biggest thing. There we go. Nike's is going to go solo push. He's going to go rage and just start kicking it down. Six seconds. BKB. Okay, let's just think what he's going to go next. Uh, attack speed. Assault Kuros. Very, very strong item. That's it's not my guess, but that that's a very great item. Uh, maybe BKB. Not really so many stuns on the on the uh, sent on the Sentinel side. Uh, so even a I wouldn't do a Lincoln Sphere because it's kind of stupid anyway. You drink quite. Look at the amount of damage from that finger of death. Ooh, a great initiation coming in from the Sentinel. But look at that Nyx. He's just eating the eating that. Oh, I want to look at this. I want to look at everything. Look at the Nyx. Absolutely just ate that Crystal Maiden. And look at his life. You think he can turn around. Just turn around. Turn around. There's... Oh, no, wait. There's a... Oh, he's going to just gain all that life back. He can just munching onto that Rubik. Food. That's what he's saying. Food. Rage goes down. Yeah, a Fisher's going to bring do it. Silence on that, on that, ooh, on that, on that Queen of Pain. She was going to blink out. Is she going to get away? That's the question. She's so low on life. Oh, she's going to blink forward. DK is going to come in. She's going to get a teleport scroll and uh, deny herself at the same time. No! Goes down to earn. What's this? That's what, 
Okay, yeah, that just weird. Never mind. Sorry, I thought they were gonna make it go on the lion, but no, turns out not. Uh, yeah, BKB might be very, very good because as we saw there, just his his attacks will get interrupted, uh, and it's only a six second length duration on that uh, rage of his. So if you can increase that by another ten seconds, sixteen seconds of magical immunity is it's nothing to laugh at. It essentially the other team is just gonna go like. Uh, GG, GG. Uh, my, my house is on fire. Please, please, let's call it a tie or something. Four staff, wow, what great initiation pro S. He's going to be able to push guys in and just toss them. But, you know, if you're thinking about it, look at the toss avalanche. What? Didn't kill? What? Another hit. A four staff just for that further chasing power. I really want to see an Agonims. He, he just gets a free tree. Death Ward. Oh my goodness! What luck! Uh, and now which Doctor does go down, Tiny, very out of position, will be going down as well to three supports, which is not good at all for the Scourge side. 17 to 6, Dean, it is Dream Close going to go off. What's going to happen? Rage, you need a Rage, you need a Rage and Run, Rage and Run, Rage and Run, son. Nope, yep, Queen of Pain, blink out. Uh, are you going to be fine? Uh, Nikes, are you going to be fine? I don't know. Dragonite, is your stun on, off cooldown? Nah, it's too close to the tower. There's no way. Uh, well, actually, maybe, maybe not. But there, we always had that Earthshaker waiting in the wings. Uh, I'm kind of cheering for the uh, Scourge side, even though I'm, I know I really shouldn't be because I really like, really like the Nikes. Um, it's a cool, cool guy. Nikes, he's a cool guy. Anyway, we're gonna have an Earthshaker just gonna jump in and do a big ulti. Ooh, absolutely just destroys, destroys that uh, lion, and he's gonna go after that. That that he's in a lot of trouble. That Dragon Knight. Is he gonna? Ooh, he's trying to fight. He, he's trying to go toe to toe with it, and he is. He's successfully going toe to toe with a dragon, with a with a with a knight. Uh, he didn't manage to. He would have won if it wasn't for that tiny intervention. Oh my goodness! Rubik just able to get a very very clutch kill on that knight before he dies. So trade carry for carry, but it, ultimately it was a fourth. It was it was it was more than that. People bought back um, a lot of TP and a lot of teleport scrolls. A lot of jumping in, but effectively, at the end of the day, it is now 18 for 20, and it is still anybody's game. I'm just going to check the items real quick because I haven't been doing that because I'm really caught up in the a uh, sorry in the team fights. My goodness, my English just deteriorates. Considering how I'm sort of, I just did like four exam papers where I I think I was illegible, under incomprehensible. That's the word. I was completely incomprehensible. I'm not gonna do well. Ogre Axe gonna be up. Singe? Which is not the best item. Uh, Heaven's Halberd. Heaven's Halberd actually not bad because you can just to put it onto that DK for the, that four seconds where he's not able to right click. It's just, it's just a very, very good, very good item actually. Uh, but of course, I would get it on the Nikes, not on the Queen of Pain, who I would prefer to have a hex on because having a 3.5, I believe 3.5 second where. 3.5 seconds where the Dragon Knight becomes a chicken would be far more valuable. Going to get a little bit of farming, a little bit of pushing on that Earthshaker. Not going to stray too far. Recognizes I'm a pretty frail hero by my spell, by myself, by my spell. Burn of Shadows, very great item just because it gives you that extra bit of health, which is, it, it really changes your chances in terms of survivability. Uh, if you can just last that much longer, get a cast off, get that extra maledict really helps with the team fight. And it will be a Messerschmitt's Reaver, so we will be going for Heart. A very strong item. Uh, recognizes, you know, you'd be a bit more tanky, bring down that uh, bring down that Dragonite. Just survive, essentially, the team fight. Not going for more DPS, uh, just to survive. Which Doctor caught out of position? Oh my goodness, I thought he was going to get away. I was I was like, which Doctor out of position in that five, man? What? He's going to get away? What? No, but uh, he, he went down, as you all saw. Let's see, Tiny, come on, oh, he's going to be going for Void Stone for more mana regeneration so he can use all his items and his skills, which I guess is okay. BKB up, a very, very, very good choice. Look at this, we have the, uh, you have so many stuns from that Tiny. You have so many, so many stuns coming in from that Earthshaker. You've got open wounds, you've got tons and tons of stuff they can lay on you. BKB, very good choice. I'm hoping somebody will go Pipe, but nobody seems to be in that mood. Crystal Maiden, yeah, should Planeswalker Cloak, maybe. Yeah, she might be going pipe. Uh, but if so, that's not going to happen for a while. Anyway, we're going to look at two bracers. Going to be going for mech on that Rubik. Playing very, very much to support. I really wanted to see him as a ganker, because actually Rubik as a ganker is terrific because of that, uh, telekin that telekinetic throw. 
I will explain more if I ever see it in action. Uh, I can tell you now that I have used it. He's a very good... Oh, he's gonna go BKB. What the hell? I completely forgot BKB had an Ogre Axe, one of its components. Silly me. Uh, smoke up. And they're gonna be making some sort of movement. BKB, very, very strong item. Uh, mainly so she can just jump. She can jump. She can blink in, essentially. And she won't get immediately stunned by this guy or a lion or something. And she can get her combo off. Because she does need about 2-3 to three seconds uh, in order to do that. And maybe so she can even survive. That does give her an, a significant amount of life, about 190 extra life, which effective HP might be even more than that. You'll be seeing a blink. Oh my goodness, what great initiation from that puck. Instantly comes in, Dream Coils on three. Oh, and it com uh, just an immediate infest from that uh, Nyx. He's going to be focusing on that Rubik first. So he's going to be chasing the supports. Oh my god, trapped by the tree. No, but eventually he does go down to that uh, Maldic. And we're going to be seeing... Oh, is he going to know? He gets interrupted. Interrupted. The Earthshaker, sorry. Gets interrupted. Open wounds on that Crystal Maiden. A lot of damage. Everyone's just completely ignoring that Dragon Knight. Yep, Crystal Maiden will be going down. We're going to be seeing a significant amount of spell damage going off. Did he get Maledict off? No, he did not. But we're looking... Look at that. He's got Orchid Malevolence is on him, and he does go down. Oh, my God. That Hex is so powerful. So powerful. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it absolutely made a fool of that Nyx. Two supports brought down that Nyx, and they're going to, yep, team wipe. Effectively, team wipe. Amazing. Two supports are the only ones left standing in the score, 24 to 23. It is nowhere near close. I'm amazed at how well this line is being used. Very under underappreciated character. I didn't think the Blink was useful at all, because I didn't think he had any you know initiation potential. And really, if you look at it, only the, the puck, the puck was the one initiated, but that blink is more for chasing purposes. It was a really, really strong play. Able to follow that Queen of Pain, just blink, blink. Don't care if you got the blink, I also got the blink. So he's really a great chaser. And the way he's being played, he's, he's just coming in at the right time, stuns at the right time. It's not so much about how long the stun duration is, but he's able to interrupt it for just long enough. Able to get those hexes off. Very, very fast reflexes. Very, very, very strong play. I really love this lion. Lion is one of my favorite heroes, so I don't know why I was bagging it earlier. We're going to be having uh, Django going to be the item of choice for the Crystal Maiden. Very great team uh, team item. Much like the mech. Uh, it gives uh, extra attack speed, extra move speed for creeps as well, so very good item. Can make a, such a great difference in, difference in the team fight. And it really, since it's percentage-based, there, you, can, you can argue that you would go up to about like 50 minutes, at least in terms of effectiveness. We're going to be seeing... What that Nyx is going to have, I believe he did not have heart. No, not yet. Uh, once he get, does get that, it's going to be a completely different game. And the moment he's only getting, I believe, plus 25, yeah. And once he gets that heart, I believe it's plus 40 strength. An extra 15 strength is so big. And then he's going to probably go for... Well, I mean, there's so many choices. He can get another Messerschmitt Reaver, in which case he's probably going to be going for a Satanic. But Assault Kuros, come on. Assault Kuros. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, the item that increases your attack speed the most is the Mjolnir, which does a plus 80, which is effectively plus 80. Yeah, when you just it's it's much it's bigger than any other item by a long shot. That's that's what I'm saying. Uh, let's see, the Orchid he gives him plus 30. Sorry, yeah, plus 30 attack speed. Uh, he's going to be getting some from uh, attack speed plus 25. Okay, yeah, decent, decent. I mean, uh, just really you. Don't really need. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, it, it's a great. It's 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 fine. It's fine. I guess the attack speed is satisfactory on the Nikes, but you'd really want him to have sort of like anti mage kind of attack speed, where he's just able to steal life, be you know, fa steal life faster than you can sort of dish it out. And the thing about his life steal ability, and why it may be a great idea actually to get extra life steal on him, is because he will heal less the lower your opponent, the lower his opponent's. Um, life is. So the more damage he deals, then the less life he'll steal, essentially, after time. So in which case he can't, as we saw before in the last team fight, not able to make up that life. Uh, but survivability, yeah, very, very great item, because there's nobody else who can really... If he can survive, he can do the damage. So really it's about survivability. He has completed the heart. The next team fight is going to be so different. It'll be a, a completely different game. And unless uh, this team is able to get their, any of their items, it they should be losing the Sentinel, but... If they're gonna be able to get the mech, just the mech, that will change everything. I'm just gonna say now, and us. Oh my goodness, Ginsu Scythe of Ice. Oh my goodness, that is game changing. 
I really want to see the Knicks big team fight. And it has been about team fights. not really about ganks in this game. It has been very much about big team fights. Whoever gets the initiation and who can follow it up correctly. We have seen instances where teams initiate and they initiate it poorly or they were just outplayed from both sides. Uh, we're going to be looking at another smoke gank. This is very good, but they're kind of wasting their time a bit. They do need a lot more farm. If they're not able to find... I mean, if they're able to find someone, great. Completely worth it. If not, you're wasting a ton, a ton of time. And that Dragon Knight is only going to get stronger. That's... Oh my goodness. Is I just really want to see the next team fight. And, yeah. Force Staff as well. Wow. That... These are great utility items. See, the thing is, they're not huge DPS and... Okay, I'm going to talk about Force Staff first, then I'll talk about this Relic and why the Radiance. I hope it's going to be Radiance. Maybe it's Divine Rapier, in which case I want I have a ton more to talk about. So I'll just talk about... I'll talk about the uh, Force Staff first. It's not the the damage output item of the century, but A, it gives you tremendous chasing power, which is what we've seen the guys trying to build his... Are they going to go for Rush? That's, that's what the guy's trying to build his Lion as, the, the, the best chaser ever. He's going to run after you, stun you, hex you, finger of death you, and he will just keep running. He'll run with you. He's like the running man. Anyway, yeah, they are going to go Rosh. Cast, draw him out. Are they going to... Wow, yeah. No opposition from the Sentinel side. Uh, they should know, though. Everybody's been missing for quite a while. Question is, can they steal it with the Puck initiation, with the Blink Dagger on that line? Yes, they definitely can steal it. So, yep, the Scourge is going to be moving out. They recognize... Okay, now, just a very, very, very strong play of the phase shift. Uh, what was I saying? The Force Staff. Best... For me, in my opinion, uh, best item on the game that you can on anybody besides uh, Hex. And I say it's in some senses it's better than Hex because it's so cheap. Uh, but also it's really, really good just as a utility. If you're... It, what am I saying? What am I saying? Effectively, you're not... As a lion, you're never going to do the output of damage that your DK is without like having a 10 times more gold than him. So what you want to do is you want to make yourself as useful as possible. And the four staff does that so well. It can save, like, let's say this guy open wounds your teammate. Oh, and he's going to go for bash. <laughs> let me talk about, come on, let me talk about some items first. Um, let's say he open wounds your teammate, your crystal maiden, four staff her out of the way. Or you four staff him into, let's say, you can four staff him, let's say you can four staff him out of the fight first. Let's say you force, uh, okay, how should I put this? One team standing here, one team standing here. You can four staff him into here. Everybody does a ton of stuns. One hexes. Oh no, he's gonna have to back off. He just sees a like a giant, giant, tiny plus giant queen of pain. Oh, what a waste of the BKB. What a waste of the BKB. That was a long duration. It's cool now now. Oh my goodness, Maledict. We see open wounds on the Dragon Knight. This is gonna be so telling. Is he gonna be able to do it? And he really has the radiance up. I'm gonna talk about that in just a bit. Uh I, okay, I guess I, I I'm done with the four staff. We're gonna be a fisher just for that extra chasing power and that Crystal Maiden is dead. Scream. Freezing Field. Oh no, she does go down. Tiny. Yep. They're going to be making, they're going to be transitioning to a push. This could be it. This could be a Rex down. That Dragon Knight already down. Uh, let me talk about Radiance. Very good item for pushing. Uh, very, very strong. DK. He doesn't need damage output. Not really being about survivability. And it's extra, extra strong. Now let me talk about this Basher. The Basher. Okay, look at that attack speed on this Rage. It does give you an extra, I believe, 50% uh, or 30% attack speed. Sorry, I haven't played Nikes in a very, very long time. Plus this Basher, you can essentially you're standing still. That's it. And if you're a DK, if you're trying to get anything, you're really going to have to rely on somebody to have a 4 staff or to have a stun available. Okay, this is, yeah, they're going to get a Rex. They should be able to get a Rex. It's about another 20 seconds until that DK comes back. At least the melee Rex. Yeah, it's it's kind of gone. No buyback. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Well, the game's really not over, though. Uh, but as I say, Dota is an extremely momentum-based game. Still, coming back from one racks, it's not even both. It was just the melee racks. Not the, not the most incredible thing in the world, but it does make your life a lot harder because now there's always going to be that pressure on that one lane. <laughs> Ultimate Orb plus... A void stone, this means hex. So, let me just say, the team fight's going to be so different the next time around we see it. That's that's what I'm going to say. I, I, I don't even want to start. Hex on Tiny is a great item. Hex on any hero is a great item. There's no hero you would say, no, I don't want a hex. Even if you have a lion who already has a hex, you can hand him another hex. Because that mana regen is insane. And because 
you could always use that extra three seconds of disable. Uh, yeah, Hex is the best item in the game, in my opinion, that anybody can get. And we're looking at a, either a Dagon or a Force Staff, or even a Necro Book, uh, Staff of Wizardry. Who knows? Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get the farm, we'll be able to see how it's completed. And ooh, we sold that bottle, but Queen of Pain still hanging on to her, she, even though she has the Axe Stick and she has the Black King Bar. Shiva's Guard would be great on her. She could also get a Hex. Uh, not too really sure if they need it, though. I mean, if everybody gets Hex, that's also great. Uh, but could be other things. They're just waiting their wings. Going to initiate. Ooh, and yep, that he goes in. Nice going to go in. Immediate Hex onto that Tiny. Not able to follow up with any of his stuns, which could be so telling for this entire team fight. Avalanche is going to come in, make such a difference. But Witch Doctor already does go down. Goes down to tower. Dragonite goes down to tower. Earthshaker is taking a lot of abuse. Right click damage. Dead by that. Dead by that puck. There's Crystal Maiden. She does go down as well. Oh goodness gracious me. Queen of Pain taking a lot of abuse. Yep. And she's going to go. So. Three for four. Oh. And that knight's just going to follow up. Yeah. Okay. That was the weirdest team fight ever. There was a lot of running. Sorry, my screen just could not fit all the action into one. But uh, effectively, we can still see that the Sentinel have team fight presence. They have team fight potential. The thing is, they're not all focused towards one, and uh, so their supports are able to do a, a telling amount of damage. I'm not sure why he isn't just running in there and just taking them down. Because I believe he can take them down if he just rages in. Maybe the puck could give him a bit of trouble, so don't focus on the puck. Focus on the lion. What is he doing? I probably think they're out there baiting him, or maybe I'm just I'm I'm the newest player ever and I don't know what I'm talking about, which is also true. But yeah, okay. Anyway, it's gonna be Basher next. Maybe Abyssal Blade. Uh, I would say you you need the the extra attack speed once you get that Basher. Great initiation. I mean, great chasing power. Great chasing potential. Get some attack speed. Definitely a Salt Cross, just because it's a great pushing item. We're gonna be seeing. And it would work so well for that tiny, maybe. Uh, maybe the tiny's gonna go for it as well, and in which case you want something else. And we're gonna see a huge initiation onto that tiny. Not have enough life. Look at that with the silence. With the finger of death. Nope, he's gonna be going in. Orchid Malevolence going to go off. We're seeing a Fisher, which is extremely powerful, but Four Staff is gonna save him. He's gonna get. Oh no. Oh, he does blink out. He's gonna be tried. No, Queen of Pain says no, but a great phase shift, and he's gonna be blinking. Oh, wow, with that loose, switching plays with that loose orb. Very strong play from that puck. Unfortunately, not good enough. A blink came in from that Queen of Pain. Just finished her off. Wow. Uh, but the lion did manage to get away, and that lion has been playing it so well. I really want to check stats for a second. Uh, I'm afraid I will be missing a kill. Uh, so please bear with me if I do. Uh, lion has 11.36. That was just what I was looking for. <laughs> Which is actually really good for a lion. I've... Oh, we're going to be seeing initiation going to be going in. But they have no stuns. He is going to teleport out just fine. Wow, that must be annoying as hell because you haven't completed your basher. Uh, oh, now, now you completed your basher. If he had that before, that, that Dragonite was dead. You know, I'm thinking items. He can probably sell. Okay, he's going to sell that magic wand. What will he buy? It can be a, it can be attack speed. Does he need it? I don't know. Maybe he could use a blink instead. Look at his life. It's thirty two twenty four. Yeah, they're just gonna go rush, which I think is a smart choice. Really, Sentinel is gonna have a very hard time trying to steal it. The Nikes is very, very, very fat. That's all, that's all I'm gonna say. The late game carry has gotten fat. At the same time, Radiance is a great item. Heaven's Halberd would be a, such a telling difference just because you're able to ignore that right-click damage just a little bit, especially if you've got Orchid on you. Uh, BKB already up as well, so that's just pretty much the standard item. It's only at 5 seconds. Rebuying it is it's risky. It's not a bad decision. I'm not so sure if this is the greatest decision. Roshan is going to go down, so it will be uh, training up that... I'm sorry? What the hell? Queen of Pain is required the age of the Immortal. Well, I guess they're going to go. go they're going to realize that, tight that um, Nyx, you're not going to die. And if you die, pretty much we've lost the game. If they have enough damage to bring down a 3200 Nyx with Heart with Basher, you know, GG, we, we, we retire from Dota. Uh, but so they realize we can do a ton of extra damage if we have that Queen of Pain. If she can last long enough to get off screams twice, maybe get off even two waves. Because these team fights, you know, they're going to start to drag, and they they they'd be a bit more spread out. So her blink is just fantastic. And let's see how many seconds she has left. Seven seconds on that BKB. 
uh, just fantastic for chasing. Cause, and, you know, the, the the Sentinel have been doing a lot of running uh, for the team fights. They've been doing a lot of juking, sort of kiting out the... Making the Nikes, you know, run for his meal, essentially. If I... Is that appropriate? Yeah, run for his meal. And with that mechanism, you're going to be having a, essentially an extra 300 life on everybody if you can pop it at the right time. So... Looking at able to looking at being able to do a ton of damage, having a really strong chaser. Yeah, Aegis is a great item. Uh, then again, I guess you could justify Aegis on any hero, really on the on the Scourge side or the Sentinel side even. You're looking very anxious to see what the next items are. I'm sorry if I'm so focused on items because uh, sometimes I'm just really hoping people will surprise me uh, <laughs> with the late game items. We'll be doing a bit of farming. They're going to be going in for a push soon, is it, for the top lane? Uh, really just guarding this tiny who's hasn't completed, really hasn't had any item progression. I was really looking forward to him getting a hex because that, that DK just can't stand up to the kind of... Really, if, if the tiny gets a hex, DK, you're going to need to do something because you only have five seconds left in your BKB. Maybe rebuying it. If the tiny gets a hex, rebuying BKB suddenly becomes a more glamorous option. And it looks like we'll be going for Heaven's Halberd. That's Sage. Maybe S and Y. Uh, also a very, very decent choice, but I prefer the Heaven's Halberd. Oh, goodness. I have been talking non-stop. It's going to be initiation power, is it? He doesn't really need the initiation. Everybody else can initiate. And he's got Infest, so he can always Infest in them. Blink. Let's say you can Infest in the Queen of Pain. The Queen of Pain can bl blink in, and he can just pop out like some sort of alien baby, which is great. Doesn't need the blink. Attack speed. Attack speed. What are he's going to go for? Yeah, it looks like he's going to be going for Hyperstone, is it? Is he going to run here right now and buy it? Am I right? Am I finally right? No, Abyssal Blade, the most expensive item in the game. Let's go. Let's do this. This is going to be so awesome. I've never seen Abyssal Blade in a professional game. I really, really, really want to see it. I am. This is like, like, oh my god. This is like watching... Dark, this is like my anticipated movie of the year. It's like watching Dark Knight Rises early for me. If that makes any sense. What's going to be going on? Come on. Oh yeah, he's going to be... See, he's going to infest the Queen of Pain. She's going to blink it. And he's going to pop out. Yes, he's going to pop out. He's going to put... Look at that. That You're standing still. Dragon Knight is practically standing still. And he still hasn't popped... Oh no! Hex at the right time. See, that is absolutely perfect play from that lion. Able to disrupt a complete attack. And because of that... You know, the the Dragon Knight can stay around for a lot longer, and he's doing a ton of damage. He could change the whole game. Nope, yep, Nyx is going to go down straight away. Wow, absolute great turnaround. Great play from the Nyx. Great play from the from the Puck, from the puck who was able to come in with just that perfect uh, Dream Coil, able to put everybody down. Ooh, Queen of Pain, wasting that age is going to run out. Sentinel side making quite a comeback. It's 34 to 32, the, so the kills are in their favor. They're showing a lot of really well-timed hexes. I bet you if you go back and you, you look at the replay, you look at the, just the absolute perfect timing of the Sentinel at a, just being able to disrupt the attacks of the Scourge. It is absolutely incredible. Very, very high-level play. They, I would definitely say, do not count out the Sentinel just yet. Even though I've been sort of singing praises, Abyssal Blade, whatever. It's not really the big items. It's how you use them. You see a very, very, very high skill game here. We're looking at no more item progression. You're going to be doing a push with these two supports. It's amazing. Well, Nyx hasn't come back yet, so I guess you can sort of justify it. You want to fight against a Witch Doctor. Still no pipe up, which a bit disappointing because there's been a ton of spell damage. You can really you can turn the entire t fight around if you have if you can pop pipe at the correct time. You'll be seeing a bit of initiation here, Fade Ball. Uh, nope, not going to be able to push quite in time just yet. Oh, a great Fisher coming in, but now he's going to pay for it with his life and a stolen Fisher. Oh my goodness, what a great turnaround. Four supports doing an incredible job. Queen of Pain in, coming in, just yelling at everybody, scream, but it is doing nothing. Look at that avalanche. He is going to go down. Tiny just went down to four supports. Absolutely amazing play. Three for nothing. And look at that Queen of Pain. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What amazing play. What amazing, amazing play. And really, what's the item going to be next? I have no idea on that on that Nikes. Is it going to be a Sokiras? Is it going to be a Satanic? Is he looking for survivability? Really up to him. Either way, I'd say either one is justified. 
a BK, a BKB wouldn't be bad. Look at that. That hex is so annoying. You can take him. You can take him. I come on. Oh my goodness, they are gonna lose this Rex. Nobody's gonna be doing any initiation at this point. Open wounds is gonna go off, and yes, we're gonna be seeing a lot of damage. Look how fast it's gonna go down. Rage, absolutely very key and crucial. Is is whether or not that Dragon Knight will go down. Yes, he will go down. So they have saved their racks. That's it. That that's how it is. Queen of Pain. I mean, uh, Crystal Maiden is going to go down to tower damage. We'll be seeing. Yep, Rubik as well. Power of that Basher able to keep that Rubik in place for about just the entire duration. Wow, Nyx is. Ah, oh, it's so hard to come back against. I'm just trying to see. The thing is, we've been seeing such great play from the Sentinel. But then Nyx is able to deal such a great amount of damage. He's able to keep people in place. And because of that heart, he is very, very, very survivable. So I'm just trying to think how can they how can the how can the Sentinel come back? Because they definitely can't come back. Uh, we've seen excellent use of that hex. We've been seeing excellent use of the hex, the natural hex uh, on this lion, but he hasn't gotten any item progressions. Really, it's about disabling and just removing that Nyx from the equation, but can you afford to ignore like the tiny? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, we've seen that you know the supports are able to outplay, if you will, the tiny, outplay the witch doctor, just catch them out of position, turn around initiations, which, well, it's really, really crucial in the game. So if you can bring down, let's say two, one support, one support. I'm gonna give. It, oh my god, let me talk about necrobook later. Later, let's talk about more, a bit more about the the way this game is being played. Bring down one support. You can bring down that Earthshaker, stop his fissure. You can bring down, stop the Maledict and the Cask on the Witch Doctor. You can bring down any of these things. You should be able to, with correct play, bring down uh, that Nyx. Okay, so let me talk about the Necro Book. What? Oh my god, there's so much to say. This doesn't matter. Okay, it's level 3 Necro Book. It is a bit late for it. 52 minutes in is too late. I'd say 30 minutes is great. You want Necrobook? Get it before 30 minutes. Necrobook 3? Not the right item of choice. Not at all. Um, if I were you, what I've gotten? Shiva's Guard. Straight away. You need the survivability. Kinda, your 2k health. That's very, very good. Cyclone? Just that way you can throw up, you know, that... Okay, see, the thing about Cyclone is it lasts exactly 3 seconds, and 3 seconds is the cooldown that you need for your Blink Dagger. Uh, so you can cycle on yourself, and the second you come down, you blink away. Or let's say you want to go into a team fight, you cycle on the Nikes, you burst down his supports, then you screw the Nikes over. That's it. It's it's something like that. Cyclone, in my opinion, would be better. But keep in mind, I am pretty much the most new player to ever touch anything. Oh my god, I was just reading about E3, um, about the stuff that they were exhibiting. Uh, I, that's a different game. Never mind. Let me talk about that. And we have smoke, and they're just going to sit in the base. I guess while well, they realize they can't... Necrobook 3 on... What? I don't understand. What's the idea? Well, I guess they're going for a pushing item. A pushing build, I suppose. I would have gotten another hex. I would have gotten another hex. I just would have been like... No, I need another hex. Anyway, we're looking at a lot of hexes going to be going off. Oh my goodness. Big, big, big ultimates going on. Crystal Maiden absolutely goes down. Tiny taking a ton of damage. He is just standing there completely stunned. He takes it and he does go down. Infest just for the extra life. And look at that stun. 2.5 seconds. Very, very telling. Dead. On that Nyx. This team fight has been changed. And we're going to be seeing... No, you're not going to get away. You're not gonna... He got away! He got away! Oh my goodness. Wow, that was amazing. And we've got buybacks coming in. But yeah, I'm am <laughs> very, very, very amazed. But, you know, for the guy to survive, he's not really that big. So I guess uh, no real bigger items on this uh, Nike. Just going to look at his gold really, really, really quick. Where is he? Uh, looking at 1,000 gold. I uh, really saving for a buy bet, which correct choice, I believe. Once you have buy bet, you don't really need... Okay, I guess attack speed would be better, but if you can't really do it with your current attack speed. BKB, not bad. Uh, if he had BKB in the last fight, he would have survived, and it would have been a complete turnaround, and it would have ended the game. That's what I'm saying. Even though... I am the most... Oh, it will be Halberd. There we go. MKB wouldn't be bad either. MKB, I'm just saying. That would be awesome. Come on. Just the damage. Oh, Heaven's Halberd. My favorite item on a strength hero. I got a friend who says it's the favorite item on any hero. 
but yeah, now that Nyx is looking at four seconds. Let's say he goes rage, right? And he's got that extra attack speed. He's got that magic on him. He's wanted. He's he's wanting to do some damage. Six points. I think mean six point five seconds or six seconds. Where he's magic immune. He's coming. He's whacking you in the face. You're Dragon Knight. You're just getting hit. Then boom, plays that Heaven's Halberd, disable on him, and he's. Oh wait, no, I, believe it, I believe it. I'm not sure if it goes through. Uh, Heaven. If it goes through the rage. Who knows? But it's actually four seconds where he can't attack. He can't right click. That's all Nikes can do. And if you if you're telling me for four seconds he can't right click, for four seconds he is effectively out of the battle. For four seconds he's effectively hexed. He is running around doing nothing. That's it. He has no other capabilities. He can infest. Come on, that's it. He has no other capabilities. It is the ultimate counter. And look at this amount of radiance damage is gonna go off. That Dragon Knight is gonna be so well farmed without even trying. He has that Aegis. He will definitely be getting some attack speed items. He will be definitely be able, more than soon, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Nikes. His ultimate slows down the Nikes' attack speed. Insane amount. Come on. Ah, uh, my goodness. Anyway, we're going to be stacking armor. Chainmail. Is that going to be for assault? Sure. Is it? No, oh, blade mail. Blade mail. Come on. Surely blade mail. I don't know. Blade mail, is that the best item? Uh, debatable. And we're going to be having a push. Cliff is going to be popped. Are they really just going to give it up? Yeah, the Sentinel looks like they're just going to give up. Wow, uh, definitely is, going to, is there going to be a Rex? Queen of Pain just running around, taking a lot of radiance damage, not really doing so much. She's going to run in. Blink. Going to go off. A huge initiation party. Ooh, a lot of hits. Nikes goes. Yo, no, Nikes manages to just get out of there. Queen of Pain taking a ton of damage. Nikes is infested. No, he is going to go down. That is it. Wow, I... I I want to say GG, but it's nice and buyback. That's the Rax. So really, anybody's game, never underestimate. Very, very good play. And that Crystal Maiden survived with such low life. Are they going to transition or are they just going to end it? Nikes is... Without Nikes, really, what, what can you do? Um, no, that then they won't be able to push that. Push the top. What's he doing? Oh my goodness, able to get a, a, a very, very well-timed stun from that uh, Witch Doctor just to keep the Queen of Pain in perpetual stun. No, he's just gonna, he doesn't even, he doesn't care about the creep, you don't need a creep wave. Let the lion tank, let the lion tank, and oh my goodness, and he still has that Aegis up. Wow, what a great turnaround for the for the Sentinel. That is amazing, amazing, amazing work. That DK, very, very strong. Never underestimate DK as a late game hero. Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful managing transition. They're gonna get Mega Creep soon. Amazing play. Uh that's just all I was saying. And Necrobook, right choice, I guess. Uh didn't really do anything. Uh those glaive throwers are gonna bring down. No, they're not. Oh wow, amazing. <laughs> I thought they'd bring it down. Nope. Creep's going to bring it down? No. Nope. Uh, I'm not even looking at the heroes anymore. I'm just... I'm... Okay, let me think for a second. Can the Scourge come back? Very difficult to. Very difficult to. Let me just check the items on the DK. Let me check his gold real quick. Yeah, 6,000 gold. Um, maybe? Let me think about it. He can, he can buy a relic... 6,200. Okay, a Divine Rapier is 6,200. So, if that Dragon Knight really wanted to, he could buy a Divine Rapier. Normally, when that happens on the late game carry... Yeah, he's saving for buyback, which he doesn't need because he got the Aegis. Chrysalis. Hmm. Breeza. That's going to be the item of choice. Do you really need it? BKB would have been better, in my opinion. Um... But still, I like Breeze. It's, it's an ultimate item. I'd love to get it on uh, Rogue Knight. Uh, I haven't gotten it in a while because the attack speed is really not worth it. But I like to get it on Rogue Knight. I'm just saying. Even though it's not the best item. Hex. I'm going to say it, 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 it's the item which I keep saying can turn games around. But you're 60 minutes in. And uh, unlike you, he does have a BKB. It's only 5 seconds. Huh. I would sell that. That Vanguard and get a heart. And I'd rebuy the BKB. But what do I know? Huh. Wow, that cast jumps off those necro. Ooh, look how they flee! How they flee from the mighty dragon knight! Four staff is gonna push him out. Just save his life. He's gonna be able to come back in. No, that tiny is definitely dead. And they should be focusing on that Nike's radiance burn, doing a significant amount of damage. Ooh, he's gonna infest. 
Do they know? They know he's infested. Oh, yeah, they do. And they're going to be attacking that. Uh, they're going to be attacking those. Yes, and he does. He jumps out. Queen of Pain also taking a ton of damage. But that is 100% splash, remember? And plus Frost. Heaven's Halberd able to stop. Make, it's like, look, he's running around doing nothing. Oh, oh, just able to steal a little bit of life, but not really. Earthshaker going to go down. Look at that. They didn't even scratch that DK. They didn't even scratch him. Radiance Burn brings down your Witch Doctor. Come on. Oh, GG. Mega Creep's going to come back. Very, very difficult to come back from this. I, I'm going to say impossible. I, I really hate to say it. I mean, Nike's such a great late game carry, but I'll carry. Just I'll carry. Uh, and it's not really carry vs. carry. I mean, in my opinion, I actually believe uh, Dragon Knight. I mean, I, I do believe the Dragon Knight is a stronger carry, but Nike's, uh, Fat Nike's, uh, should be able to go toe to toe. And GG will be called. It was really more about the, the play from coming in from the supports which was just absolutely perfect, great timing, great disruption, look at the amount of creeps there, great disruption just by, by it being able to put off the hex at the right time, able to get the stuns in at the correct time. Uh, so there was a bit of a comeback, you know, left, right, just go, uh, but ultimately, good game, I think. Very good.